The two sides agreed to halt hostilities and for Tuareg rebels, who took part in the uprising last year, to be restricted to certain areas. According to details of the agreement, long-term peace talks will start after the election. The government of Mali is committed to respecting everything that is in this agreement. We invite all the other concerned parties to do the same thing, but we ask and we will continue to ask for the assistance and support in particular from ECOWAS, the African Union and the international community in order to allow us to put this agreement into practice as of today. We will do, if it's God's will, to respect this agreement in the higher interest of our communities and for the peace in the sub-region. We urge all sides, through action and words, to turn the page of hate and open a new one of love and cohesion between all communities. There has been a long-standing distrust between the government and ethnic Tuaregs who launched an uprising with Al-Qaeda-linked militants last year. But an advance on the capital, Bamako, was halted after French forces intervened, turning the tide in the conflict. The UN's humanitarian coordinator for the Sahel region says Mali still faces grave problems, adding warning indicators are flashing for the whole country, with people in the north being most vulnerable. We have made an important step today, which must now be put into practice as quickly as possible, in a way which also reflects the spirit of this argument. A donor conference for Mali last month raised $133 million, barely a third of the $400 million targeted, but that is pegged on the country holding a credible, all-inclusive poll. We congratulate ourselves for the balanced, realistic and pragmatic nature of this agreement, which creates the political condition and essential security for presidential elections to be held which is a building block in the process of putting in place legitimate and stable democratic institution in the Republic of Mali. Talks between the two parties stalled last week over outstanding arrest warrants against Tuareg leaders, but a source intimated an agreement had been reached and they would not be carried out. The accord does state, however, that international investigators will look into crimes against humanity and war crimes committed during the conflict. The International Criminal Court says it's already collecting evidence. Robert Magilla, CCTV, Nairobi.